Hello, it's Tim's dad for Tim's useless unboxing channel and I'm back with part two of my Vivor ultrasonic record cleaner review and uh, yeah, a lot of talking and not, not much demonstrating but that's the nature of this thing. If I turn it on it's so noisy that uh, uh, you won't be able to hear me above it anyway but I will do a little another quick demonstration. Of the two videos, my first one and the second one, I'm hoping that this is actually the better of the two because I've now I cleaned around about 200, 220 records with this machine and I made some mistakes along the way and I'd like to, um, I guess, tell you about those mistakes so that I can ensure that you don't or help you from making those same mistakes. There wasn't many. Um, it's a pretty easy, pretty easy thing to use. Uh, there's not much to it, um, but I'll get straight into what mistake I made. I'm just going to move the, uh, the record holder over here. You will need to assemble this, of course, because you're going to need to dry your records. Uh, once they come off the machine. Uh, this here is the spindle where your records will go on and then you attach it to the machine as so. All good so far. You get five of these, what I called in the first video, record protectors, and they are not record protectors. They are spacers. And all they do is space the record from one to the next. So you put a record on, you put a spacer on, record, spacer, record, spacer. You can do up to five with this machine. Um, it gets quite heavy and puts a little bit of weight on this. So I'm guessing that's what the manufacturer thinks is about the maximum weight that this thing would be able to handle. Um, now, one of the things that, one of the mistakes I made, the biggest mistake I made, was to think that these were label protectors and they are not, they are spacers. When you have a look at a record, obviously you've got your last track, then you've got your spacing where your needle normally lifts up if you've got a semi-automatic or automatic turntable, and you've got your label. And if you're anything like me, a bit paranoid about um, damaging your records, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get my labels wet. So I mistakenly was putting these on thinking that they were a label protector, but, but they are not. Uh, this is probably a bad record to demonstrate this one on. I'm going to go back over here to Midnight Oil this has uh, got far more music on it, obviously, because the gap between the end of the record and the label is only very, very small. But if you see here, it's around about half a centimetre. If I put the label, well, sorry, I'm going to call the label, if I put the spacer over it, you can see that there is almost no, hoping that's clear, almost no gap whatsoever. Uh, well, it's still there, still a slight gap, but it's nowhere near, or well, this is much bigger um, than the label itself. And why does that matter? Well, when you're doing five, you put one record down without a label, uh, without a spacer, then you put a spacer, record, spacer, record, spacer, and your very last one doesn't have a spacer either. So it's completely exposed. Your, so your first record that you've put on the spindle and your last are going to be exposed. Now I'm not going to waste time with putting all of them on, but I shall put one on. Uh, they are a tight fit, but that's probably a good thing. So you pop your label on like so, and then you've got your spaces underneath. So you use all, you get five spaces with it, you use all five if you're going to be cleaning one record at a time. You, um, you use four if you're going to be doing five records at a time. And the mistake I made is when I placed this unit in here, the spaces are so thin that there's hardly any gap between each record and it's almost impossible, this with my poor eyesight, to see the, the records on the inside. And what I did is instead of using the line inside this tank with which to fill the water, I used the outside label as my marking point. So what I did, I checked the label, yeah we're still, we're still proud of the water, I got my water, topped it up a little bit, I thought yeah the further up I get it the more of the record's going to be clean. And unbeknownst to me, inside, uh, in between those records, these spaces, which I thought were, were label protectors, were touching the water. So as it spun around, they would touch the water, the water would seep underneath, and it would hold the dampness and the wetness and spread it out quite evenly across all of the label. Now, um, being paranoid that I damaged uh, my records, I jumped onto Google. Uh, as they were drying out, and Google, I even read that some bloke uses a kitchen sink to clean his records. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, one of the records has got some slight watermark issues um, around around the edge. Only one, it was a cream one from the 70s, I think it could have been a Sherbet album. Um, 
So you can damage them. When they, if you look on Google and they say you can't, I, I can tell you now, you definitely can. So if there's one tip, one tip I could give you on this, do not think of these spaces as label protectors and do not try and judge how full the tank should be based on your label, be it the inside or outside one. Only use the line in the tank. Only use the line in the tank and then you can't go wrong. Uh, if you're doing one at a time, it's much easier to see the spaces and you'll have a much better idea whether they're touching the water. So one at a time is more foolproof, but it's slower. And the second thing I should impart is that I, I, as, as difficult it was to see in between the records, I was getting my eye down and I could see the bubbles forming on all five records on the inside. And I was going to say that it doesn't matter whether you do one record or five records, this unit will clean them all equally as well. So you may as well, if you've got a big batch of records to get through, you may as well get through them all um, at the same time. Now, that's not quite true. I found that in the main, if a record is reasonably clean to start with, putting it through in a batch of five is going to be fine, but a dirty record, and there's, I've got no reason to, to work out what makes a dirty record sometimes, but a dirty record will still come out sounding, you know, cleaner, but, but not quite perfect. And a, a perfect example of this, I grabbed this one out. This one's Schmil Schmilson. A little touch of the night and I just damaged, no, no, I didn't damage my record. Uh, that's a, don't do that. Don't drop, don't drop your record as you're picking it up. But this is a Schmilson. Um, it came out and it, it's one of those records that I thought was near mint. It was, I can't, there's not a mark on it. Um, and it had been sitting in somebody's record collection for a lot of years. And I put it through the machine as one of five, played it, and it sounded average. In fact, I couldn't understand why it was sounding so average because I just, to my eyesight, could not see the, uh, any dirt or, or anything on it. Um, so I put it through as a single record. Now it's like new. And I've, we, my wife and I went down to an op shop. We bought five or six records, some real finds down there. So uh, it's not too late to get some really good ones at the, um, at the op shop. One of them was uh, Steel Ice Span. We played that. It sounded okay. Uh, not great. I put it through as a single record on this device. And yeah, again, it's, it's like the Schmilson. It it sounds new. It, it's fantastic. I think I heard one pop in the whole record. Um, so uh, it, it is fantastic. Now, I've got this unit turned on, and you'll see that I've turned the temperature up here. I, I set it to 30 degrees. What happens when you start the, uh, the ultrasonic motion going, this goes off fairly quickly because the ultrasonic motion creates heat. So this thing won't be working for very long. Um, it'll, it'll heat up to 30 degrees and it's only staying on because I'm not using it. But the minute I start to turn this thing on, that light will pop off. So that, um, don't, nothing to worry about there. What will happen though is a little bit of evaporation takes place. So your six litre tank as it's advertised only needs five litres and you're going to have around about 10-15% of your five litre tank left over and you're going to need to top up the tank depending on how many you're putting through in a batch but you're going to need to top that temp tank up um, probably every second or third batch that you put through um, or every second or third record. Now this holds 50 records. I thought there is no way I could, uh, I could be using, you know, have this if I thought it was just way too big, you know, probably doing five at a time. But, but believe it or not, not, records, particularly here in Melbourne, are very slow to dry. Uh, and I found that I had this, rec this uh, rack completely full and I had to slow down with my cleaning process. Now, um, things that I, I don't like about the unit, well, there's, there's not much. Um, I guess I don't like the fact that it, it looks a little bit uh, non-purpose built. And by that, I mean, it looks to me like an ultrasonic tank that's been designed in, to be used on other, other products. And it doesn't look, apart from this, you know, the, the, um, the, the motor with the um, spindle on it, it doesn't look to have been purpose built for uh, for records, but hey, for the price, I mean, I don't I don't really care. Uh, the other thing I don't like is the noise it makes. I can't really blame it for that. Um, it is just an awful noise. So if you're using this, don't do. It. I've got it set up in the kitchen for the video, but whatever you do, don't use it in the kitchen. Find somewhere that you can got at least one, if not two, doors that you can close behind it, because it's going to drive the wife and the kids spare. It's going to drive yourself mad as well. So you won't. Even your music's going to be spoiled. The quiet bits in between songs are going to be spoiled by this thing running. So you want to get this in a part of the house that you can um, get um, 
not hear it. Uh, what other faults have I got with it? The motor on it makes a slightly different sound now to when I first bought it. It sounds like it's straining a little bit more. Maybe I'm imagining that, but hey, it's, it's got a got a I think a year or two years warranty, so I'm not really kidding. And besides which, what it's done for my record collection now, if it was to pack it up today and they said no, it's not under warranty, I honestly don't think I'd care because I feel like I've got my value out of it. It's really, really done a great job. And on that front, how can you tell if your record cleaner is doing a good job? Well, the most obvious thing is you can hear a difference. And boy, what a difference you can hear. As I've mentioned, first a first run through for a lot of my records, and that's all that was needed. And five at a time was fine. But on some records where there was an issue, it would need more than one run through. And that second run through um, is what did the trick. As I was replacing water, this I would do a batch of maybe 50 records per tank, uh, and that was probably a little bit too much. But with these problem records, uh, and the ones that I got from the op shop, so there's five or six records that I put through last weekend, clean tank, uh, uh, cleaned the tank thoroughly, filled it up with water again, created a new batch uh, with um, the alcohol and the, uh, the photo flow. It was perfectly clean and I put five albums through it and I was mortified by the amount of dirt that was in from five records. Now, what I did before I put the records through is I used my my cleaning cloth, which is, you know, the traditional way of doing things, how I would have done things in the 70s. That's all I had, this and a brush. So I brushed them and used the cloth and got them to what I thought was spotless. I admit my eyesight's not great, but I could not see any dirt. I could see the dirt coming off as I was cleaning cleaning them very gently, and I'd get the dirt off. And each of the five, rec five or six records that I put on the machine, I was expecting almost nothing to go in because I honestly thought, well, this batch of water is going to last me a long time. Uh, the truth of it is, it's not because there is so much dirt in the bottom of this. Um, I'm amazed at how much dirt came off five or six records. It, it really was a lot. In fact, it was as much as I reckon when putting, back, putting through a batch of, of 50. So that tells me another thing about putting one record through and not putting five. It's much better at doing one at a time than is five. But again, if you've got a huge record collection, you're just going to be going forever. So uh, I guess putting five through is an adequate compromise. Um, but yeah, putting them putting them through one at a time is probably the best way to go. Now, if any of you did watch my first video, I mentioned one particular album, Red Sails in the Sunset by Midnight Oil. Somebody had left their turntable lid open and I was my theory had painted the ceiling and there was paint splatter on this. And uh, I Googled it, tried to work out how to get it off. I tried a little bit of alcohol by itself, tiny little bit watered down, of course. I tried, uh, I mentioned using a toothpick. That did, but I was sure I was damaging the record. It just felt so bad doing that. And I'll, I'll admit, Putting a record, dousing a record in water does not come naturally, even to this day. I mean, I've done over 200 records and I get my prized record and I stick it in and I think, oh, that's, that's not going to be good for the record. However, as it turns out, it is really good for the record because it makes them sound so much better and I get so much more enjoyment. Part of the thing of listening to a record, yeah, is you get the odd pop and crack and that takes you, you know, the nostalgia trip is there and I like that. I don't mind that a record is not perfect. Uh, I don't expect them to be perfect, especially when you're buying secondhand records like I am. However, I do want them to sound as clear as possible and I certainly do not want the pops and crackles to overtake the actual enjoyment of the music. As was the case with Hot August Night, the, the prologue uh, with the violins at the very start, it was a competition between the violins and the crackles as to which one was winning that competition. And in the end, I thought oh, there was, that was a borderline binge job. Of course, you know, once you got into Crunching Grand Ole Sweet, everything was, everything was good because the music was louder than the scratches or the the cracks and popples and pops but this machine fixed that and yeah i can still hear a little bit there but it is much 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 better but this record this was a genuine it needs to go in the dumpster record as i mentioned somebody had left the lid of their turntable open they'd been painting the ceiling covered in paint i tried everything that i could on on google to uh, to get it off nothing was going to do it and this was my last resort I've put this record through, I reckon, five or six times. There are some tiny little marks left. It seems like it's um, almost, the paint is almost stained inside the grooves. It's down to about 5% of what it was. All the big bits, I could see them floating in the tank. 
and it was a, it was a hallelujah moment. I just I knew the thing was working. Unfortunately, I didn't see as many each time I put it through as I would have liked. But eventually, it was as I say, ninety five percent gone, almost a hundred percent. What's there seems to be not a not a bit of paint, but a bit of bit of a mark or something. I've played it. It plays fine. Yeah, a couple of pops here and there, nothing to worry about. It's rescued this record, um, which would otherwise have been a, a throwout job. So anything that can get paint off a record, I think, is worth worth its consideration. Now, that was probably the worst I've ever seen. I should also mention that a lot of the records, because I'm buying them from op shops and secondhand on eBay, have lots of marks on them. Um, and this seems to get those marks off sound. Not all marks are equal, as I've discovered. Yeah, of course, it's not going to get a scratch off. A scratch is going to be with you for life. But a mark, this seems to get those marks off remarkably well. And the records come out looking looking just so much better than they did when they before they went in. And this one, as I mentioned, has gone through twice. Uh, a, a touch of Schmilson in the night. The other thing I was worried about was um, was it would the records lose their sheen. Now, you've probably bought the old record or might have the old record in your collection where it seems to have lost its sheen. Um, and I've always thought a, a nice sheen on a record is uh, means that the vinyl is in reasonably good condition. And I'm, I don't know whether this... I've had to close the, the blinds behind me for this video. I don't know whether the sun's is capturing just how shiny. Every record that comes out of this, the shine seems better than before it went in. I don't know whether it's placebo effect or what, but they look in better nick than they did before they went in. So the two things that you can do to tell whether your record cleaner is working, I don't know whether I've mentioned this before because this is my fourth take, so I might be repeating myself here. You can hear it and you can see it. And definitely, number one, you can hear it. When I play a record that's gone through the machine, it sounds better. If it's gone through by itself, it sound, and it was in really bad shape to start with, it sounds a lot better. It's made every suspect record I've got in my collection, you know, records that I wouldn't bring out, bring, around, bring out if friends were over, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to be commenting on how bad they sound, and I want them to enjoy the music. It's restored those records. I wouldn't have a hesitation in bringing any of them out now. My entire record collection saved. Uh, and the other thing is you can see it. And as I said, five or six records have gone through this. It is amazing how dirty this tank got. I cleaned it, as I said, with this. I was sure it was every record was clean. I was 100% sure that they were, that would be lucky to get anything off. I thought this tank had last me a lot longer than it has, but it's almost ready to be things. So which makes it expensive if you've got, got a lot of records you're doing one at a time. But thankfully, this stuff's only five bucks. Don't know whether I mentioned this on this take or the other take. I got this from Walton's, $10, $8 delivery. Uh, I've done 220 odd records so far, maybe a few more. And that's, it's well over 90%. Hopefully that's showing in the camera, over 90%. You only need five, six drops per tank to put it in. And you're gonna need a little bit of uh, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol, just helps with, helps the, um, I guess the, uh, the bubbles that are getting into those grooves a little bit. I used a little more than I probably should have with this album to help it get in and get that paint off. Uh, it needed every bit of help it could get, but being that it was so diluted, it was much better than trying to use a, just a diluted thing with toothpicks and what have you. The, the way I was doing it, I felt like I was butchering it. This record, again, if friends come over, I'd have no problems playing this record. Um, it's been fantastic. Uh, Oh, yeah, albums like this, which were a bit suspect. This one, was, it was like new, but sounded average. Put it through this machine, sounds great. Would I recommend it? 100%. Have I had any problems with it? None whatsoever. Uh, it, was it worth it? Oh, it? It was worth it if it died tomorrow because it's made 220-odd records sound fantastic. Uh, would I recommend you buying one? Yeah, I would. It, it, there might be better ones on the market out there, and I sort of wish this was designed to to look more like a purpose-built record player than maybe it's designed that it looks like you put your watch in there or, or jewellery. But, hey, it's something you're going to put in your cupboard anyway. It's not, not something you're going to be showing your friends, uh, unless they're an avid record collector. So uh, with all of that, I think I'll, I'll wind up. Uh, one final thing. Um, whatever you do, do not click like and do not subscribe to Tim's Useless Unboxing channel. If you do, he's likely to make me do more of these stupid films for him. And uh, his wife, Kelsey, I think has had a gut full of all of these videos, as I have. So please, do not like, do not subscribe, do us all a favour. And on that, I'd like to say thank you. As I, as I turn this on and you can watch, you can watch um, Midnight All go through for one final 
Now I'll warn you, the sound's going to be pretty bad. One final five minute or ten minute run. Oh, well, how did you do that one? Oh, hopefully it picked that up. It did. Jesus. Okay, so you want the, the fart edited out. <laughs> Should I just leave it in? Leave it. Leave it in, Tim's useless unboxing channel. Take four. This is take four. Okay. Hello, it's. Oh, no. oh, I think I need to break wind. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You know, I mean to laugh when your husband's. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's always a little, little follow through at the end, isn't there? Hello, it's Liam's dad. For, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Take five. Hang on, you just bumped the thing. Am I still in the? Now you you bumped it. Uh, yeah, you, you give me the thumbs up. It'll be farookied. That's fair. No, okay. Take six. Liam, Liam, Liam. I have a question. Yeah, what's your question? For our viewers that aren't in Australia and don't know what Bunnings is, okay. what is this? Because you haven't explained what it is, and, uh, and where do you get it if you if you don't know well, where Bunnings th is? This is this is demineralised water. Right. Uh, Bunnings is a hardware store that's throughout Australia. I thought Bunnings were everywhere actually. But uh, Home Depot, Home, de Home Depot, America, whatever. whatever. Demineralised water. You can't right. use tap water. You've got to use demineralised water because it's got to get rid of all of the impurities. I believe that they steam water, and it's the steam that's generated from steaming water that creates demineralised water. That's my rather inept knowledge of it. The other things you will need is some photo flow or some sort of water treatment and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. This, for Australian viewers, this on Amazon is 50 bucks and you only need a few drips, but I bought it from a place called Walkins Photo Store in... Thank you.